This is website cover pages with Matt Sinclair. Thanks, Johanna. Yeah, if everybody was here for Herman's session, he did a great job of kind of setting the stage, um, getting your content actually laid out. Um, this will kind of take your website to the next level by adding a cover page. Um, and so uh, I'm Matt, I'm a lead account manager here with Run Sign Up, and uh, websites are like kind of one of my passions. Um, there's so many features that Run Sign Up that I love. I can't really like, put this at like the top one because they're all so great, but um, let's kind of get into some cover pages. Um, basically, every race should have a cover page um, just based off of um, our search engine optimization that we do by default. We do a lot of technical stuff under the hood. So even if you already have your own website um, for, for the race, people come to run sign up to register. Um, if you were in Natalie's session about referral tracking, that's going to be the first impression that people come to your website. So having a nice looking landing page at a minimum um, is, is a great um, branding exercise for your race. Obviously, you can point your content um, you know, back to your website or just like in Herman's session, you can create content um, in the uh, race menu. So all these cover pages, our entire website is mobile optimized. Um, you can customize a header and specific content. Um, color schemes, uh, you can add different branding for your race, highlight your charity, things like that. And you can always drive whatever actions that you want with a lot of different custom buttons. You have the call to action at the top with the sign up and the donate buttons. And then for other different information, uh, you can you know, create different sections of the cover page to land people which, wherever you need to. Um, also, this enables a slideshow header. Um, so with the regular race website theme, if you don't open a cover page, you just have that one banner image. But with the cover page, it opens up up to five different uh, options. So like you saw before, right out of the box, we have a very basic website. It's got the call to action buttons uh, on the left hand side with the uh, race banner and your events. And then what we're going to show you today is the after. If once you enable cover pages and do some customization by adding headers um, and some custom sections, you can have a nice professional looking website um, at the end of the day. So first thing you want to do is enable the cover page. Most anything you ever want to do when you're customizing your website is going to be underneath of the race tab under our race website uh, custom section. Uh, this specific presentation is only going to talk about the cover page section, and you'll see that it's highlighted right there. Again, you can always use the menu search and type in the word cover. It'll bring you right to the cover page uh, and any other type of menu items that you're looking for. Uh, you can just type it up in the search. But for today's purposes, we're under the race tab, under race website and cover page. Um, the cover page is one of our few uh, features that does offer a preview option. Um, so you can test around with it and view um, only as the race director and it wouldn't be live. Um, or when you enable it, you can fully publish the cover page and kind of um, update in, in real time. All of our features are in real time, uh, just like the cover page. Um, and so the race info page that you would have as your default landing page, the cover page will now replace that as whenever anybody types in your website on Google and comes directly to the page, they'll now see that cover page. And then the race info page becomes a menu item underneath of your race menu. Uh, and with the cover page, the imagination is the limit. Um, there's so many customization options, so many drag and drop features that you can kind of really do pretty much anything you, that you want. So when you're on the cover page, the first section is your header. Um, and this is kind of like the race banner. Um, you can up, you add up to five different ones to create a slideshow. Um, and so what you want to do is um, create however many that you need and name them something specific that you know on the back end. So in here, in this example, we have the landing slide and then we have the wildlife foundation. That is not information that is publicly available. That's you naming the slide on the back end. So if at any time I can click on the little, um, the little grid to the left and click that with my mouse and drag it down to kind of replace the order of the slideshow that I have. Um, so feel free to create them in any order and then rearrange them however you need to. The plus icon at the bottom, that's how you would create a new uh, banner. And then if you ever want to go back in and edit or um, you decide that you don't like that slide, there's an edit and a trash can icon there as well. So once you are inside of the header content, you give the name of the header. Again, this is not publicly available. This is for you to know what that slide is so you can rearrange it in the future. Um, and then we have lots of optional custom text. Uh, the title is going to be in the large font. 
um, at the top and then you have a description which will be um, we do have rich text options for that um, so some different customizations you can add with it but the rich text will limit uh, some of the things that you can do um, then there's button options again you can have a banner that clicks sign up now or click here to donate or more information so um, you can add whatever type of buttons that you want to do and based off of the race theme that you set up um, those color schemes are already ready at your disposal when you're creating this stuff. So whenever you're adding these header images, these images scale to fit the device because we're mobile optimized. So when you upload an exact image, as you change to like an iPad or even a, a mobile device, that image will crop on the sides to kind of scale with the, um, the device screen size. So there is an advanced option here. <clears throat> if you're very particular on having the exact image show, you can prevent uh, cropping from occurring, um, but that um, is only allowed with one header image. So if you're going to have multiple header banners, um, you have to allow the uh, scaling for the mobile device. So when we're uploading those options, <clears throat> there is a crappie tool. Um, now we recommend starting an image size around 2000 by 800 for a full section, and then you can see the little zoom bar underneath the photo. So that way you can kind of scale where you want to go and here I just kind of went into the middle of the photo and you can see that the the runner dude is kind of slightly off to the right and as the screen size scales he's still going to be on the image um, and he's not going to get cut off because he's he's central to the image um, if you are adding split content options for the custom content sections later a good starting point for those is 900 by 360 pixels uh, for the split and again you still have the crappie uh, tool um, that you can kind of zoom in where you want to. So some advanced uh, header um, tips and tricks uh, for this is if you've already gone through the race wizard and you've set up that race banner, it's good to have like a different race banner image potentially. That race banner is your default image for your email marketing. Um, so you can kind of think of an easy way to add a banner to all your emails is you can use the normal race banner that was set up in the race theme, but this cover page is like a different header for your actual website. So that's just kind of one neat thing to know is that it's an easy way to have separate imaging based off of what you want to do. Or if you really want to brand the event, you can add the race uh, theme banner and have your main cover page banner be the same thing. That way, any email marketing communications and your website are kind of in sync. Um, I do suggest enabling autoplay when you have multiple headers. That way, if somebody's on the website, it kind of slowly scrolls through the fader. Um, that's kind of nice to have. Um, so that way, people can automatically see the different uh, content sections that you have in your header um, if they're just sitting there, you know, browsing your website. Another good thing is to kind of alternate images and colors. Um, so that way you can kind of make the, the race kind of stand out as you are scrolling through the slideshow. Um, it's just kind of a nice um, accent to add to your race, especially, as, especially to brand the colors um, of your event. Um, and then you can potentially consider, like I mentioned before, a fixed uh, header. So that way there's no cropping. Um, but again, that's only a single header option that you have when you're setting up the, the race. And so kind of looking at that, um, to play off the, the alternating images. You'll see here an example where it starts out with the Vancouver Trail Run, an image with like the, the, the motto, and then it scrolls to just a blank, you know, branded color um, for a different contest that they're doing. And then it fades back to something that's promoting the, the charity partner. So that's kind of an example of, of kind of alternating images um, with different text uh, to get an idea of things that you can add. So, now that we're done with the header, um, the first part of the website, the, the content is where you know the meat and potatoes of your website is. Um, now you don't wanna get over complex with this because we all know that participants don't like to read. So I think of this as like the cliff notes section. Um, so you can add multiple content options with like quick text to just get them like the bare bones minimum of what they actually need to know based off of different items that you're, that you're um, promoting. Um, these also have the color schemes auto applied and there's plenty of different uh, options that you can add so you can do a full width custom section if you want you can split up the columns uh, we have a countdown to race day or countdown until results um, come up to be published um, you can even create your own custom action buttons uh, we do have a video component within the uh, cover page as well so it's really easy to add a youtube uh, video 
right to the, the cover page. Uh, and then we have custom data components for dynamic content. And we also evolve price increases. And now we have a virtual challenge option. That way um, you're basically accumulating an entire leaderboard um, that people can, can submit to a common goal. And that's a really nice thing to have. So when you create a content section, um, again, you would name the content type. Again, this is not public information. This is something so you know what that uh, header is. So that way you can click and drag and move things around if you need to. Um, there's edit mode options um, that you can quickly split the content or change to various components once you've kind of started creating your um, content section. And so you see all the different icons that you can use to do those data components here. Here's an example of split content, adding a nice little quote with an image uh, and then contrasting that with a colored um, color scheme area where we're kind of promoting the charity. So that's just one nice thing to have to kind of break up the page a little bit and promote two things, um, both like a kind of a testimonial and um, a reason of why they should you know, help out the charity that you're supporting. Uh, custom actions, uh, this can really be anything. It's just to highlight those custom sections that you've already created uh, based off of Herman's presentation earlier. This can be a quick way to highlight that. So not only do you have your custom menu at the top, but you can create uh, a bar of custom menu actions for anything that, that you wanted to uh, kind of promote. So for here, we have a custom action button to become a sponsor for the race or one to volunteer and get, get more information as well. So these also, have dynamic links. So that way it's automatically linking to whatever page that you want. So for this screenshot, we're linking to the race info page, but we also can link directly to the results page, donations, volunteers, uh, registration in general, as well as a custom URL that you can literally do you know, pretty much anything with. Here's an example of that video content. So it'll appear with a little play button so they can play, the video will pop out and they can watch the video. Um, you just plug in your YouTube ID. Uh, you don't need to plug in the whole you know, youtube.com part of it. You just need to plug that actual video ID in, in the back end. Uh, here's some examples of data components. Uh, obviously, everybody wants to share on social media. So adding a social media data component is really nice to have. Uh, and then you'll see here, these are the preview images. So that's why they're kind of in light gray. But once you, um, you know, view the cover page, they'll be in the color scheme that you have. So we can even customize and show the event tiles. You can highlight a sponsor section. Fundraising component is in real time. That's a very, very popular one that we have. And so those are good type of data components to, to add to your website. Uh, and then the newer smart components, um, if you've already had a cover page but haven't really played around with it for a while, is that virtual component. Uh, it's a great thing to have an inclusive mile challenge for all participants in your race, can lead up to a total distance, whether it's around the state or around the United States or what have you. Um, and then you also have dynamic price increases. So I always recommend at least one price increase, probably two. You have early bird, regular, and late registration. And this is a component that dynamically automatically shows that next price increase and with custom call to action to get them to register. Uh, some advanced content tips and tricks, highlight your charity. <laughs> um, it's so easy to highlight your charity and put a good spotlight on them that I definitely recommend at least one custom section to it in addition to your header banner. Um, create an FAQ section, you know, need help, and then I have a custom link button to that custom content section. Again, the, the content area is your cliff notes of your website. Like they just wanna get real quick information. I can look at the four or five different blocks that you've created and then boom, I get the information that I wanna go. I don't have to like navigate through and read paragraphs just to find the information I want. If you can kind of get those four or five different nuggets of information of where people are typically looking for information, um, then you can add those as cover content. Um, also highlight your swag. Uh, that's a very big eye catcher of why somebody would want to sign up for your race. Um, and uh, you can drag and drop to change things up. So if you have a price increase coming up, you can click that little grid in your content area to move that to the top. So that way it's, it's top level. And then once you know the price increase is maybe like a month away, you can move that back down the website and then better promote the swag or the charity or whatever other sections that you want. So here's an example. Uh, again, a lot of these uh, images that people add as images to backgrounds of the content. 
uh, that's exactly what it is. It's supposed to be a background image and that scales uh, as you're on a mobile device. But if you really want to highlight a fixed image that with no cropping, you can actually add it and embed it inside of the description as an image. Um, and since these are generally square sections, if you are doing something like this with like a mosaic with the double split sections, you would add a squared image. So all of these images that were added in these four uh, sections here are all square. So no matter if you're on desktop, uh, tablet, or on mobile, it's going to keep that and maintain that square image as the um, screen size shrinks. And there's no cropping on it because you've added it inside of the description as a custom image uh, that is square. So that's a little trick to help with um, making images show up in full, especially when you're highlighting swag. Uh, not necessarily in the cover page section, but again, something that kind of overlays the overall uh, cover page itself is that email capture form. So it's definitely a nice to have. It kind of slides in from the side or you can have it only pop up as you're navigating away. Uh, it's a perfect way to capture information, tell people why, to, why they do your race and get them to convert. Um, and this is actually set up under the email marketing section under the email capture form. And so I think every race should have this and don't forget about this list. You want to kind of look at this list, see, you know, new weekly updates that you can get market to those people because they've already kind of raised their hand that they're thinking about your race. And then they're right there in your lap to get them to convert. Um, you can just tell them why they should do the race, what the charity's doing, send them a coupon code, all sorts of stuff. And so hopefully I got through the high level of the, the cover pages. I love answering questions. So uh, if there's anything we got. Derek, uh, we don't have everybody uh, filling out the survey yet. The poll's only 63% complete. Oh, we got to get that survey done. Or they're probably busy creating their cover page right now. So. Boom. Um, how do you get the split content boxes to appear with the color break in the middle? Yeah, so that's just the using the theme to, um, to have a different color for each one. So as you're splitting the content, um, when you create the split, let's go back here to just kind of show it. Each, each uh, custom content section has its own colored background. So when you're creating it on the page and it's split, you can make the left side be like a white background and the right side could be one of your themed colored backgrounds. Um, and so um, that's all on each different section. So that gets that nice little line in the middle. And then if you wanted to kind of do the mosaic here, you know, you can do like white on the upper left and white on the bottom right. And then you can do blue on the top or you know, whatever you wanted to do. Um. The, on the new cover page, is there still a place for updates under here's the latest? So here's the latest. So I'm, I guess we're looking for a dynamic content. Not really sure I understand. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, you can constantly keep it, keep it fresh, you know? Um, I guess the one thing we didn't cover, we do have the new cancel postpone pop-up tool that that could be part considered a part of the cover page, but it's not. Um, that's a pop-up that becomes, you know, content. Um, but you can always, you know, click and drag whatever the most prevalent information is, um, and then coincide that with an email, uh, whether it's a registration follow-up email for the latest going on, or just an update with how the lo local um, municipality is handling. COVID or what people need to do. Um, so that's how I would handle that is just clicking and dragging around your components. Um, Willie said, you know, good content, but this was, was this quick. Um, we actually have a couple blog posts that have also gone over this as well. Um, and this is recorded. So, you know, there's definitely gonna be some information uh, that you can pluck out later on, or again, feel free to email us, um, either your account manager or info at runsignup.com. Um, if you get stuck on something. Yeah, this is this gets your, it gets the brain flowing and the juices. So that way you know what's available and then definitely dive into your, your website, go to the cover page and just start poking around. 
again, this is one of the um, options here at the top of the cover page where you don't have to necessarily enable it, um, but you can always preview it. Um, and so that way you can like, oh, I wanna click here. Let me add this one color and save it and see what it looks like and then go back. And, and so just tinker with it um, without having to worry about anything. Like you're not messing with registration. Um, you don't even have to go live with the cover page. That's what's great about it is you can preview it as you're working on it um, just to kind of tinker and see what you think looks good. Um, and then at any time you can always change it. You're like, oh, I don't like the, the four block. I want to just do, so I want move move social media here and boom, you can do whatever you want. Rome wasn't um, built in a day and neither should your cover page. <laughs> um, Crystal, we might, um, you might want to ping us privately um, or email us just so we can kind of see what's going on here with this. Um, happy to get you taken care of on kind of where your hang up is. Um, let's see, Nick was asking something about, Nick Beach was asking something about Taylor Swift. Nice. Yeah, you just got to shake it off. You know, you get put that cover page up there. Um, he also said, can you prevent the photo uh, from the website from showing up on mobile? So my buttons are above the fold. So yours don't have to scroll. Uh, that could be with your layout. Um, so you have the, the different layout, whether it's horizontal or vertical. Um, the call to action button should always be at the top of like your logo is gonna be at the top. You do have a custom section or in the race theme page, you can change the, the uh, race name on mobile. So it doesn't show the race name and just has the buttons up there. Um, but that might be a vertical or horizontal, but I can definitely take a look at that for you. Um. Is there an easy way to convert custom sections to cover page sections? No, they're, they're different um, functionality um, to do it. I think you should really do both um, because the, the cover page content section should kind of be like the highlights enough to get them going. Like what a virtual race is, they can hear, go here to submit results. Uh, and then there could be a button. Obviously that, that button would send them to the results page to start logging it. But you can then explain in more detail what a virtual run is. Hey, here's your virtual bib. Here's all this other stuff. So that's how I would kind of treat it. Just like a, a custom section, you're not listing all your FAQs in the custom section. You're just listing out that, hey, do you need help? Click here for our FAQ and you're using them in tandem. So I think they, 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 they complement each other. Yeah, I'm gonna reach out to Crystal later on, kind of okay. digging into what she's looking at here. I'm not fully understanding it, so. That might be it. I don't know. Can I All see right. questions? Yeah, we can go. Uh, I think that's pretty much everything. Um, so next up at 2.30, we'll have email marketing with Whitney. Um, if you, the other two rooms are going to be the check-in app in room two and shipping management in room three, um, all of them are going to be recorded. So you can check out whichever one you want. You can still see the other ones later. Thanks. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.